Welcome everyone. Um, my talk is about uh, bidirectional transformations with lenses. Um, you heard a bit of it, but my stuff is a bit different. It works only on strings. But um, to make it clear, I just start with an example. So, oh, I need to reload my presentation, sorry. Okay. So, at the top you can see JSON. It's actually GeoJSON, which means there is geographic information encoded. This is pretty simple. It's a point with a coordinate. Now, in the geospatial world, we have many different formats for geodata. One of those is called well-known text. And it's very important, and you might want to transform to it. So I just push the button, and you can see it got transformed. Um, this one is easy because you can see the information basically got mapped one to one from the GeoJSON to the well known text. I can now edit the point and transform it back to GeoJSON. And it got updated. Um, what you should also see now is at the end I have this properties thing. Um, which has a value, and I can now change this value to something else. Um, transform it to well-known text, for example, and again update it. And the cool thing now is the properties value still stayed the same. Now you might wonder, this is not rocket science. Everyone can do it. I mean, transforming one string to a different string is really, really simple. And it is. But remember the title. It was about bidirectional transformations. This means you have only one code snippet, and it will transform in both directions. You need only co to code one function, basically. Um, let's go into some of the words I need during my presentations and the theory behind it. So the most important piece is a lens. Um, then you, of course, have some input. And you want to transform it to some output. Um, in order to do it, um, you have something called a get. This is within the lens. Um, now the get takes the input as input, and the output will be the output. OK, that's simple. Now, um, in the example, this would be so the input would be the GeoJSON, and the output would be the well known text. Now, you update the well-known text, we've seen it, and you get back some updated output, the updated GeoJSON. This transformation is called create. Again, it takes the um, updated output and it takes the input. Uh, so, it, so it takes the output as this time as input and creates the updated um, source information. This still is not that exciting. And now you might wonder, well, if I only take the output, how could I recreate this properties value? Because I've updated it, and how does the well-known text, how should it be aware of that I updated this value? There's a third way of doing things, which is called put. And that is probably the coolest one. It again creates the new input, the updated input, but it takes as input the concrete input as well as the output. This way, you can have transformations that are destructive. So the properties got stripped off in the well-known text, but you just uh, recreate it uh, when you um, transform it back. So um, let's get a bit in how the API looks like, basically. Um, what we have is um, the most simple lens, probably, which is a copy lens. Um, those lenses always take a regular expression as the first argument. So you have an input string. Think about, again, the coordinates, for example. And now what you do is you um, pass the string. And if there is a number, you copy this number. So the input string is a 2. And you copy it, so the result is a 2. Now for the create. You do the same. The input thing, so the updated value now is a 5, and the output is a 5. For the put, as I said, you take the updated value, which is the 5, and the original string, which is the 2, and you get the updated value back. So in, in, in case of the copy lens, the create and the put do the same thing. A slightly more difficult lens is the default lens. 
Um, it again takes a regular expression as uh, the first input, but what it does now, it doesn't copy the thing, but it transforms it to something else. Let's say, for example, a string called JS. So now you put in a 2 and you get back a JS. This time I will first show you the put um, because it's again simple. You have the updated string, which is a JS, and then you have the 2, which was the original source and you get back the two. The problem is now what are we going to do about the create? I mean, it would need to create again um, somehow um, to m something to match the regular expression, but it's really hard to create something that matches a certain regular expression. So the easy solution is you just supply it with the default value when you create the lens. So this transformation will just create an all. Um, so I don't want to bore you with going all those things because that's basically it almost. This is the foundation of all this. There are a few special cases which I quickly go through. It's the Dell lens, which is basically a, um, is, which is basically a, um, uh, it is implemented like the um, default lens. It is based on it. So it just deletes the regular expression from the input string, but won't put anything into the output. We again and need the default value, of course, in, cause in, in case of a create. The ins lens is the only one that doesn't take a regular expression as first argument because it just appends it to the output string, and if you transform it back, it got just got deleted. And finally, you need somehow to combine all this. So you need to um, combine those um, del and ins lenses, for example. You can do um, concat them, so we have several of those applied. Then you have something called a union dense, which is basically um, just an, an or. So you can say either apply this lens or apply that lens. And finally, the, the cleaning, which is just one or more um, appearances. Um, I now will guide you through the um, example and just code and so you can understand what it really l looks like when you code such a transformation. So let's start with the point. Um, we would need um, a default lens uh, because we want to transform the um, point in quotes to an all uppercase point as a string. Point. All right, let's see if it works. Now we just transform, so I'm, I'm currently only um, transforming on this um, liquid point above. It works. Let's take a look at the coordinates. Um, what you would do there, okay, it's all selected now. I'll quickly reload, okay. So I will work on the coordinates. What we do now, so what we transform now is we transform the coordinates which are in square brackets to uh, round brackets. So first we need a lens, which is a default lens, and it uh, transforms the square one, square bracket, to a round one. You can already test if it works. And now, so the input field is wrapped into a concatenation nation, so we can just keep on going. So now we need a copy lens which copies the uh, numbers. I keep it simple and just use uh, two-digit coordinates. So that's, that's enough. You can, can check it. And we can already transform it back. So if I now transform it to GeoJSON, you can see it got updated. So now I just finished this example because we now need again a default lens which transforms the comma and the space to just a space. Okay, um, and f then we need another copy lens to copy the coordinate. And finally, we again use the default lens to copy the, uh, to transform the closing square bracket to a round one. Oh, sorry, it must be a closing one. And now I hope I didn't make a mistake. Yeah, there we go. And now we can again change the numbers and get it transformed back. 
So the last missing piece of all this is actually the JSON, which consists always, or in this case, it's an object, which is a key and a value. And the cool thing now is you can use the full power of JavaScript. So we just create a function that does it for us. So um, we match, first we match, so what we want to do is we want to match the key and the value and apply a lens to the value. So first we have a function which takes the key as an input and the lens as an input. Now, um, of course, the key is always in quotes. Um, then we go on and for the, for the output, normally, so in our case, we don't need the value of the key at all, so we just delete it. So we match the key with a colon and a space. And um, of course, for the way back, for the create, we need to recreate it. This is the default value for the create, again, the key. And finally, we apply the lens. We wrap all this into a concat lens and return it. That's it, basically. Now we create it with the power of JavaScript. We've just created a new combined lens, which we can use now. So now I will get back to the full example. So we want to transform the whole thing. Again, we start with a um, no, this time we start with a Dell lens because we don't need this, um, the leading curly bracket. Um, curly. <laughs> then we use this nice function we've created, um, JSON KV, and it takes the key as an input, which is type, and it takes a lens, and I've prepared it a bit, so the lens was stored in a variable called type lens. So this is basically the, the point thing I showed at the beginning. And we can already check it if it works. So far, so far it works. It just deleted the, the JSON stuff and it works. Now we just need to also delete the, um, again, the comma and the space, because we don't need it. Um, and again, we need the JSON Kiwi lens for the coordinates. This, again, I start the, for transforming the coordinates in the lens called Chords Lens. And finally, we delete the trailing curly bracket. Uh, OK. Wow, it works. I haven't m managed to do it without a mistake when I tr try to do it. So it's the first time it works. Excellent. So now what you can see now is <laughs> um, I can again edit the values and transform it to GeoJSON and yeah. So now you've seen the examples and might wonder wh what, do, what do you want to use it for, the whole thing. My original idea was, um, again, an example from the geospatial world. I wanted to transform XML to JSON. The reason is all the geo standards are always huge and XML. It's always XML. And those people want to code in Java and use XML. Um, I don't. And I think JSON is way easier to handle with. I also want to do things like storing, for example, the geo information in CouchDB. Therefore, I need JSON. But those guys. I could say I could just code some JavaScript to transform the XML, but I have the problem those guys also want to have XML out again. And with this type of thing, you can just code it once and you end up with having one single function and it transforms your XML to JSON and you can easily transform it back. Another use case is again CouchDB based. Um, those who are familiar with CouchDB, um, you could imagine that you have views, and views are normally a subset of your document. You might not want to show for some information of the document and just create a subset and publish it to the viewer. You could imagine to code something that um, takes put requests on views. So you put only some updated value to a view, and then the original document would get updated in the database. Stuff like this. And finally, there's also one thing I miss actually from the XML word in JSON, which is XSLT. I enjoy XSLT, ra but rather the idea behind it, so not how, how it actually works. And I think we miss something like this in JSON. 
I mean, you can also do JavaScript code, but having some easier way to do it would be cool. And now if we could even do it uh, bidirectional, it would be even better. So I would also l want to see it as a, uh, as a way of doing XSLT. And the cool thing is that um, the theory is based on as so, so wha what I've just sh showed you was always working on strings, but in theory you could al this ca can also work on any data structure. So you could be also trees like JSON. Um, and of course you want to check it out. Um, I've just pushed it like 12 hours ago. And so it's on GitHub, you can check it out. And um, the code is not very clean yet, so you have global variables and so on, but well. Um, I will fix all those things and yeah, thanks for your attention.